Hey guys, I'm Steve here at the Dublin Academy and we're just going to have a quick little run through of the uh, Leaving Cert Ordinary Level Maths Paper 2. So uh, this, to be fair, I thought was quite a nice exam overall. Uh, question one was to do with coordinate geometry and to be honest there, there wasn't a whole lot of tricks that he threw in. He did ask some drawing of coordinate geometry stuff which some students would definitely struggle with but it was still doable and there's other ways that you could have maybe approached it. Uh, the question two was on the circle and the line and again no massive tricks in here very very similar to how he's asked it before and if you've done your um, solving equations by a substitution method then you are going to be absolutely fine in that question. Uh, question three was getting into you know probability and stats and arrangements here and I'd say uh, students might struggle with the arrangement question because they often do but the other side of it the B part on the scatter plot and the correlation was very nice indeed. Uh, question four as well was again a bit more statistics and probability thrown in together. Uh, students probably might have struggled with the end of question A to do with uh, the theory behind talking about independent events um, just because quite often the theory part's actually what catches people out or having to write English in a maths exam. Uh, you've done enough of that this week. Uh, so over on then to the next one was looking at kind of the area um, of what was a circle, a square within a circle and a circle within that square. Or circle, square, circle. And even though it kind of looks a bit challenging, they hadn't seen it before, there wasn't really a lot to catch out. And if students had practiced uh, anything on their area questions with the circle and square, this should have been a fairly approachable question. Um, turning over then, there was a bit on geometry about finding different angles and a small construction there as well uh, of constructing a parallelogram. So th there was nothing massive in here. Um, you just needed to know your rules of parallelogram and then you're kind of fairly set to go. There was a bit of algebra in part B, but a lot of students would practice similar problems to this, so it should have been very uh, approachable. Uh, on to the second section, the section Bs. So the section B, question seven, uh, was to do with uh, trigonometry and angles and triangles. And I think the only problem really with this first question was asking the students to give the gradient as a percentage. He did give them the equation, which was nice, and he, you know, there was an opportunity there for students to kind of get into the question, but I think when you first look at it, it might have been a bit daunting. Uh, but if students actually read it, they, they might have seen, actually, this is fairly approachable um, once they got past that part, because it just might not have been a way they'd seen it before. Uh, the second part B was very friendly, as was the part C involving uh, cosine and the sine rules there. Um, so then on to question eight. This was a... Uh, uh, PAV problem, perimeter area volume problem. And uh, again, the A, the B, and the C parts, are, well, the A and the B are very approachable uh, for students. There wasn't much in there to challenge them. The C part uh, took a uh, cone shape. Uh, so students would just have to know about looking for the uh, Pythagoras theorem there to find L. And then finally, uh, there was a hard little part three there a challenging part three, we'll say, uh, to find the angle inside to the nearest degree. But again, um, not, not, not a killer question, quite nice. Uh, question nine here I looked at uh, statistics, sorry, my brain blanked there. Uh, statistics and finding the, the, the maximum number of students in a sample, the median and things like that. Again, very approachable to lots of students. Uh, had to use the mid-interval value. That was the only thing to watch out for there, but a lot of students have seen very similar questions. And again, it was mixed in uh, here with uh, taking confidence intervals, your 95% confidence or your 5% level of significance. And to be honest, if you'd practiced those from previous years, there was no trick there. It was a very approachable question. So a uh, nice question if you prepared that one there. And then the final question, question 10. I really liked, okay. Uh, it had a, a pentagon shape with the different angles and the students had to uh, you know, work out the angle, which was quite nice, work out the sides and all that. And then the C part of it was tucking into actually writing out the number of uh, outcomes that were possible. And it actually even told them that there was 25 outcomes. So that was nice for students, uh, very achievable marks because you, you, you know if you're right or wrong at the end because there should be 25. And then um, kind of they, they walked them through it, I thought very fr friendly here. Part D was an expected value question, which if students had prepared, would it was very, very approachable. Um, overall, I thought it was quite a fair paper, uh, lots for students to do. And I think if you made, uh, took your time and picked the questions best suited, 
it should have been quite approachable for uh, everyone. Best of luck in the rest of your exams.